Hi, thank you very much. Um, thanks for being here. I'm going to present our project called the Memory Music Box. Uh, this project is a collaboration with Alexandra Rieger, Janelle Sands, and Janet Baker. Before starting, I wanted to ask, is there anyone in the audience who has um, visual impairments and would like me to maybe describe the images? Okay, I'll do my best. Um, this first slide is just a box, a wooden box. Um, so isolation is one of the largest contributors to the lack of well-being, increased anxiety, and loneliness in older adults. So in collaboration with elders in living facilities, we designed the Memory Music Box, which is a low-threshold platform to increase connectedness. So we used um, familiar form factor for this technology that we embedded with innovative application to help facilitate elders in crossing technology and communication barriers. Um, the research community has contributed notable research in support of elders through monitoring, tracking, memory augmentation, and uh, e-health. Uh, in terms of tracking, there's a lot of technology that exists to facilitate caregiver in monitoring and tracking family members or patients. Uh, in terms of memory augmentation, now there's a lot of tool design for elder adults with mild cognitive decline. And although those could be momentarily useful, studies reveal that these systems are generally time-bound, unfortunately, and are unable to provide relevant support as individuals continue to age. Um, in terms of e-health, there's a lot of technology now to help um, focusing on uh, medication management. Um, and this image is just an, one of the instances of uh, tracking systems where you have a GPS tracker uh, hidden inside an insole. And this is an off-the-shelf device from a company called SmartSole. Um, and also, more communication support technology exists than ever before. Most social media platform and ICT systems are not designed with elder accessibility in mind and present barriers to older population who are not technology literate. Um, and even devices designed for autonomous use by older adults usually have a figurative expiry date. Um, the notion that, that we coined the cognitively sustainable design is this idea of creating something so intuitive and accessible that one can continue using it despite an increase in age, disability, or cognitive impairment. And on this image, it's the same box open with a screen showing a video call inside. So I'm going to show a little video of the project, and then we're going to talk through it. This is a video that shows possible use case of the design. Um, and it could be used in a lot of different scenarios, but in this work, we generally called grandparent user, the elderly um, user targeted, and a grandchild user, the possible correspondent that can be called through the music box. Um, so upon simply opening the box, uh, the, the system turns on and a slideshow of images and music uh, has been activated while sending a notification to someone else's phone, the grandchild user. And on their phone, the grandchild user can choose to say hello. decide to do so, it activates the video call mode. So our design choices focus on connectedness. talk a little bit about the design of the project, this simple box. We went through a series of different form factors, uh, but the final form factor is based on an Android phone uh, hidden behind a glass panel surrounded by a frame mirror in the lid, in the inside lid of the box. 
Um, we use the phone embedded camera, microphone, and speaker uh, to create interaction. Um, we also use the IMU present in the phone to detect the opening and closing of the box. Um, the choice of a box and the idea of maybe presenting the project as a kit that can be personalized by the grandchild user and the grandparent user together um, is also part of, of the idea of the project. And the box can be filled with memorabilia and meaningful objects. Uh, we can talk a bit about the user interaction design, uh, which was shown in the video earlier. Um, and everything here is oh, it's a bit hard to see on the image. I'm sorry about that. Um, everything is based on uh, giving agency to the grandparent user, the ease of use, and the feeling of, of connectedness at every opening of the box. So when the box is opened, it activates the slideshow mode um, while sending um, a discrete notification to the grandchild um, phone. If the grandchild cannot answer, the box remains in slideshow mode until it's closed. If the grandchild can answer, it activates the video call mode. And the video call is uh, being, being terminated when the box is closed. So the grandparent interaction only consists in opening and closing the box um, and looking at the images and talking in the video, video call. For the grandchild interaction, um, one part is synchronous with uh, the grandparent interaction by um, answering the notification and um, participating in the video call. But there's also an asynchronous way for the grandchild to interact with the system by curating the slideshow content. So we created this online platform that can be used from a phone or from um, any computer connected to internet. Uh, and the idea here is that we imagine the system for a grandchild living in different time zone uh, for, which, for whom it's hard to jump on calls, um, <clears throat> but that still allows them to actively participate uh, in their grandparent life. Maybe each time they think of them, they can go and update the songs, the photos, as well as, ch as changing some of the settings, like the volume, luminosity, speed of, of, um, of slides. Uh, we also developed on the side uh, a little add-on system so that each time they add a photo on Facebook, they can decide to also add it to the music box. Um, to refine our design and get feedback from target users, we ran a focus group at an independent living, uh, senior living facilities called the Senior Living Center in Brookline in Massachusetts. And we also conducted an online survey to gather feedback from potential grandchild users. <clears throat> For the focus group, um, we worked with 10 individuals between the age of 70 and 95, divided in three groups. Uh, and each group um, discussion was guided by two researchers. We asked questions regarding the current state of connectedness with their loved ones and presented the system. We let them interact uh, with it. And finally, we ran a series of questions about the design and their potential in using it. Um, what was interesting, we noticed right away that um, by asking questions that 80% of the participants uh, reported being unsatisfied with their current cognitive, uh, connectedness with their family, as we expected. And when we asked them what makes it difficult to connect with your friend and families, two elements stood out. The busyness of their correspondence, so participants hesitated to reach out in fear of interacting a busy schedule, as well as technological challenges. So. Um, Current technology did not support their connectedness. None of them um, had the technological experience to be able to video chat, or to engage in video chat with a family, except one person whose family had installed Facebook Live notification on her phone so she could see them at a push of a button, but she could not interact with them and they could not see her. We also had a very um, <clears throat> touching story from a lady who told us that she has about 10 photos of her family on her phone that one of her niece installed a few years ago, um, and that she looks at those photos every day. Um, following the first part of the questionnaire, participants interacted with the prototype of the music box. They were able to pass the box around, video conference with another researcher, and experience a slideshow of music and images. Following the interactive session, we asked them about their thoughts. Some of the responses included, I think it's wonderful, would be great to have. Um, and we are also accessibility questions such as, oh, I'd love one to share with others. Could the screen be bigger, brighter, and with a higher volume? Someone said they would like to have this um, on a nightstand. Um, and so that 
give us interesting insight. In a future version, we would like to include an automatic uh, blue tone reduction of the, uh, to the display um, to, when it's detected that the box is being open at night to prevent circadian rhythm disruption, as well as having a system to automatically choose calmer music from the playlist. And a notable uh, finding arose from the focus group that elders saw po potential for two distinct types of connectedness leveraged through the memory music box. The first, interfamilial connectedness, um, uh, came from this current insatisfaction of, um, of the connectedness with the family. As we saw, there was 80% of people that were dissatisfied. Um, and participants expressed that they felt that their connection could improve with the box as it's an accessible device that sends subtle notifications that are non-intrusive to the point of contact, allowing outreach to be um, easier and therefore maybe leading to more frequent connection. And the second form that we hadn't thought about at the time was interpersonal connectedness related to sharing one's personal created memory music box slideshow with their peers and friends inside the living center. Reminiscent therapy research revealed that both music and pictures can support autobiographical memories, making it easier to recall and share life events and conversations. And many of the participants noted that they would enjoy sharing their box to learn about one another, deepen conversations, and include life experience and current family updates. So the second part of the evaluation for the online survey uh, we asked 37 individuals between 18 and 54 about their current interaction with grandparent, feedback on the design and interaction, and their feedback on the grandchild interface and projected use. The survey revealed limited interaction with grandparent compared to how often the participants were thinking about them. So 87% of the participants said they only visit their grandparent a few times a year or less. Um, and that there was a big gap between, oh, sorry, it's really hard to read on this image. So there are three charts um, that show the result of how often people um, have face-to-face -face interaction with grandparents, have phone calls, video calls, and how often they think about their grandparents. So 87% only visit their grandparents a few times a year or less. 74% only call their grandparents on the phone a few times a year or less. And about 80% also video calls a few times a year or less. But people think about the grandparent way more often. Um, so more than 50% think about them several times a month. Um, we also ask questions about the content of the current interaction. And 52% um, of people think that their conversations with their grandparent always remain at the superficial level, uh, des beside, despite being very caring. Um, and most people reveal not knowing what music their grandparent enjoys, so 74%. Uh, and even more of the impression that their grandparents do not know about their musical taste, 96%. Uh, when we ask what are the limiting factors um, that in their grandparents' ability to connect, 40% of people answered that memory loss is an obstacle to connection, and 80% stated that the grandparent experienced general difficulties with using technologies. And globally, only a third of grandchild participants reported feeling happy with the current interaction with the grandparents. So then the participants were introduced to the concept of the music box and showed the created uh, slideshow interface. Um, uh, many believe that the device could improve frequency of contact. However, a small percentage questioned whether the box format could be beneficial. Uh, one correspondent stated that they think it's interesting, requires good internet connection. If it doesn't work a few times, my grandma might get frustrated. Um, the conceptual idea of incorporating reminiscence therapy into technology catered for elderly in order to spark memory gain was quite popular as 74% agreed that doing so could induce more meaningful conversation. And what was also interesting is that when we asked them how frequently they think they would update the media content of the box, uh, we obtained a result that was really an uh, interesting balance between how often they think about their grandparent and how often they actually engage in, in conversation or interact with them. So we thought that could be pretty good. Um, so as an insight, there are three general insights that, that came out from this project and from the evaluation. The first one has to do with business and guilt in um, interactions. Um, so several grandchild um, 
participant worried that um, it creates a heavy commitment and a feeling of guilt in not answering to notification or forgetting to update the photos. So someone said, I would feel guilty not picking up if I were busy knowing that they were looking at pictures of me. And someone else said, it's very sweet interaction, but I'm afraid if the grandchild doesn't answer, the grandparent will be sad. But maybe it's okay, because if they see new photo or hear new music, they would know that I thought about them. Um, but what's interesting is that from what we gathered from our focus group, generally grandparents are very aware of their grandchild's busy schedule, and that's what prevents them from initiating. And uh, grandparents sometimes happily spend a lot of time looking at an existing limiting set of photographs, so maybe even minor improvement on this um, could be welcomed. The second insight had to do with the gap between thinking and connecting. Um, because more than three quarters of participants reported that they would update the media content at least once a month, which is three times more than people who reported calling their grandparents at least once a month. And finally, um, more than half of the grandchild participants think that the discussion remains at a superficial level when they interact with their grandparents, and some seemingly important details about, one, about each other's life are not often discussed. And more generally, only 30% of grandparents share about their past, interests, and memories, while only 23% of grandchild share about their interests and hobbies. So both the focus group and the online study revealed that uh, there's a real desire for ways to trigger more meaningful and personal interactions. And um, similarly, grandchildren uh, seemed hopeful that um, well-created trigger could improve not only the quality, but also not only the quantity, but also the quality of interaction with a grandparent. So I would like to, to thank the resident of the Senior Life Center who helped us, the participant of the online survey, all of the author grandparents, as well as our PI and our lab group. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the presenter. Any questions from the audience? Okay, so uh, let me start with one question. Um, it looks like uh, in your project, uh, other family members, they interact with the system in a more reactive way in that uh, once the, the elderly open the box, they'll receive a notification which will encourage them to interact with the, the elderly. I'm wondering if there is a way to design a system that can more proactively encourage other family members to connect with the elderly. So yeah, that was, it's true, it's a little bit extreme in our case that it actually seems that the, um, the family cannot be the, cannot decide the interaction. It really comes from the grandparent user. This was really a reaction to seeing what exists nowadays in the research or what the off-the-shelf device. And when most of the system are actually one-way connection in the other direction, from the family to the elderly, or, um, co or collecting information, all of the monitoring examples that exist. And most of the two-way systems that exist uh, are also pretty passive in terms of giving agency to the elderly. So either the system are always on, or they, or they turn on when the person walk in front of it. So we really wanted to, to put the accents on uh, the agency of the elderly. Thanks. Um, any other question? Yeah, just a comment. I, um, I really like this talk. It was very nice, and I wish we had this for my mom. Uh, uh, do you find that, uh, that people get more interactive, that the, the grandchildren interact more with the grandparents when they have this extra tool? That's a good question. I think the next step is definitely to do an actual deployment of the system. Um, and there are a lot of different things. For example, I, I didn't talk too much about it because it's a, a very long conversation, but what is connectedness and what is um, interactions? And, and the notion of loneliness is very different from the notion of being solitary. So what we're trying to do here is creating possible triggers um, and, and giving a feeling of agency to the elderly people um, and, and creating something that's a very, uh, some kind of very soft technology um, that, that's not only about 
creating togetherness, but also about transmission of um, meaningful aspects like photos and memories and music um, in a way that's, that's basically in the background but still um, demonstrate care. I don't know if it answered. I, I would really like to build one of these. Uh, is this open source? Uh, that's the idea. It's not really usable right now, but that's, that was definitely the goal. And because uh, using Android for us is also really a way to make it very deployable, because we don't want to sell a product. What we want is anyone could download something and then use it. But then it also causes problem of security. We don't want people to be able to spy on. So that's why we're taking some time before really putting it, uh, making it available. Thank you. And I, I see, uh, uh, hi. Um, I had some questions around uh, uh, an experimental evaluation of how well this works to work towards your goal. Uh, I was wondering how you would control for the very fact that an intervention was made. Because you have a system, and then the system does something. But how do you control for that? That's, that's a very good question. And in general, I feel like most uh, all the research and technology about um, providing new things to elderly, just the only fact that we go to this living center and we interact with them about this project makes them really happy and is already a big change in their life. So if you ask me, it's not technology that we need. It's societal change. <laughs> it's a different way of treating our elders. Um, but I feel like if, if we don't have the choice, for example, my grandparents live in France and I live here. So it's hard to connect and that was basically the trigger for this project. Um, but coming back to the notion of evaluation, um, there are different challenges in evaluating. Um, one of them is that every case is so different and a lot of um, older people uh, might feel extremely um, What's the word? Um, there are a lot of elderly people who can use technology. And then this project is not for them. It's really for a smaller part of the population. It's also a, an excuse to think about this notion of cognitively sustainable design. So what does that mean? That most of the things we do now would actually not work for our future self. Right? Think about yourself in like, I don't know, 50, 70 years. None of us would be able to use what we're doing now. Uh, so when we start losing our cognitive abilities, what remains and it, does technology still have a place there? And I guess that's what this, the, one of the questions that this project asks. Uh, thank you. All right, let's thank our presenter, Rebecca, again.